All right, we get started. End, end of the first quarter. Um, hard to believe, you know, uh, three and one, a solid start. Obviously, one short of where we hope to be at this point. One win short of where we hope to be. But uh, just recapping uh, the game up in Chicago, going on the road against a good team, well coached team. Um, unique circumstances, no fans in the stands at, at all. Uh, thought our guys handled it well. And Philip alluded to it after the game, talking about he liked the energy that we brought. We talk about energy comes from execution, and um, that execution comes from focused. So I thought our guys were focused. I thought we had good execution in all three phases. I thought the defense played particularly well. Um, stopped the run game. That was a big, big deal. Uh, they were great on third down, really, really good in all areas. So start to finish defense was was excellent. You know, offensively, uh, thought we did a lot of good things. Uh, you know, came out, had a good opening drive. You know, in a game like that, it's good to get off to a fast start, get the lead. Don't get the other team, you know, get out and lead, get the lead. That's, that's a big deal. Um, so did well there. Third downs were pretty good in the first half. Um, had, had some productive big plays. Um, in the run and pass game, uh, we got to eliminate the negative the negative plays. Too many negative plays in this game. That's a mix of uh, that's a mix of everything. That's a mix of they had a few players that just made excellent plays. Uh, we missed a few things, and we can coach it better. So uh, I think those are the three areas that contributed to that. Um, but you know, offensively against a good pass rush team, I thought our protection was good all day. And then I thought we started fast, and then we had that long drive. At the end, you know, we had those five scoring drives. Um, you had a bunch of three and outs, uh, Kevin Bowen, so that was disappointing. But uh, we did compensate by, for that by having a six, a 14, an eight, a 10, and a 13 play drive um, that were all scoring drives. So that was, that was solid work there. Special teams was good. You know, Rod going four for four, really solid performance by him. And then uh, just looking at, at our kickoff coverage unit, really big challenge to them this week, you know, going up against uh, their return unit. They started at the, uh, you know, we got them inside the 23 times. You know, we got them inside the 23 times. That's huge job by our uh, special teams unit. So overall, really good performance. You know, we won our double positive that we talk about. We won the turnover battle. We won the big play battle. You know, we, you know, that double positive thing that we talk about, we won that. We won both those. That usually means you're going to win the game. We won the hidden yardage battle, um, the way that we keep our hidden yardage. So uh, it was a solid win all the way around. Um, this team, though, we know we know we got to keep getting better. There's still a lot of room for improvement in all three areas. There really is, and so that's that's what we're going to work on. Um, so we know we got a tough opponent this week. We don't rest too long on these laurels. We we want to gear up for for the next opponent. Um, obviously going on the road to Cleveland. Uh, just update on the injuries from the game. Obviously, Darius with the groin. Bobby Okariki had a thumb injury. He'll have a procedure today. Um, he'll have a procedure today on that thumb. Costanzo had a rib injury. Uh, EJ Speed had an elbow injury. He's getting a scan on that, uh, I believe, today. TJ Carey still, you know, rehabbing from his hamstring. All five of those guys will – you know, we'll evaluate them this week and, you know, really just see how they progress this week. All right, Phil B. Hey, Coach. Um, Phillip's obviously thrown a lot of balls running backs, and I, the general question is how do you balance or how difficult is the balance being predictable but also wanting to take advantage of that when you get the right looks? Yeah, you're, yeah Phil, you're right. I mean, it's, there's always a balance, and – you know, and he's the one who gets to pull the trigger on that. And, you know, we just trust him. And he's not going to be right every time. But for 17 years, he's been right a lot of the times. And, and uh, you know, we just, you know, he's, he's our guy. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, we're four games into this. I think his play has been really good, um, excellent much of the time. And, um you know, I, I thought he played this last game exactly the way he needed to play. It made some huge plays on third down. Trust in his receivers to throw to T.Y., you know, to throw to Marcus down the field. You know, we get we get the pass interference. So we're, we're pushing the ball down the field at times. You know, we had the other one that we missed to, to uh, T.Y. down there. I know Phillip said something about that missed throw. There was a little collision down the field that 
that kind of precipitated that. But, um, but then to use the backs, you know, those are high percentage throws and we get the backs that are they're like run game to us. And he has a unique ability to do that. He's done it his whole career. And yet this is the key still maintain a high yards per attempt, you know, yards per attempt deal. He's, he's found a way to do that. Now, this was lower for us than normal. Um, but that, you know, not every game is going to be perfect. Joel Erickson. Thank you. Frank, do uh, Anthony and Darius have a chance to play? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna evaluate. Uh, uh, you you're talk. We're gonna you're talking about Bobby and Darius are the two that that I'm. Bobby, mentioned. Darius, Anthony Costanzo too. You mentioned. Oh, right? Anthony. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Anthony Walker. My fault, Joel. Um, yeah, we're gonna evaluate them as the week goes on. Um, too early to tell right now. George Bremer. I think that means four linebackers now in, in some kind of injury situation with Adams on IR and, and then the three who came out of this game injured. How big of a concern is that with what Cleveland's done in, in their running game? Yeah, obviously they're number one in the NFL in, in, in rushing yards per game. I had a bunch last week. Um, they, they're, they're a talented offense. So, um, you know, our defense, is, our defense has been pretty stout in this area. So it's, this is going to be a great battle. Um, obviously, you know, us, our ability to stop the run is going to be a priority importance, um, you know, with our injuries, uh, you know, I mean, there's no way to really address that other than to say it's, we don't, it is what it is. Well, the guys who can play are going to play and they're going to play well, and we believe they're going to play well and it doesn't change for us. I mean, that we have no, there is no other alternative mindset. Um, whatever the injuries are, they mount up or however many or to whom um, it makes no, I mean, it makes no difference. Sure. Each one is important. You care about every person and that means something to us personally, but as far as the team is concerned, uh, that doesn't change our mindset. It doesn't, the Browns don't care. We got to stop the run no matter who's out there. Mike Chappell. Frank, you mentioned the negative plays and there were, there were probably more this, this week than there were the, for the previous three games. What do you attribute it to? Was it was it the field? Was it you know bad calls? Was it was it poor blocking? What was it? Well, just in anticipation of you might asking me this question, Chap, I just happened to right before I got on this call, I said, I, "Let me think." Chap's going to ask me about negative plays, so I'm going to go back and watch every one of them, so I can give him a very informed and clear answer. I appreciate um, that. Yeah, <laughs> um, I watched every one, Chap, and it's as you would expect, a variety of things. Barn. Um, you know, a couple of those are, one or two of them are footing issues. One or two of them are poor execution up front. One or two of them are poor coaching. Uh, one of them in particular, I didn't like the play call. Um, you know, I didn't like the play call. I'd like to have it back. So it's, it's too, it was too many. It was too many. Just a quick follow-up, and it's an obvious question, but what do, does it just put you behind the chains when you have yeah. that? It's, you know, it's, it's instead of being second seven, it's second thirteen. I mean, what does that do to the game? Yeah, I mean, it gets you out of phase, but that you know, it's not good. But you know, we we ha we can have overcome that. We've had a bunch of first and twenties that we've overcome, you know, via penalty. Obviously, not negative running plays, but we've overcome first and twenty. I think a handful, it feels like to me, three, four, five times this year already. So it's not the end of the world. You don't want to have them. Um, but you, you just really want to look at it case by case and say, hey, we just need to get better. Uh, you know, what, what is it up front? Did they do something up front schematically that caused it? Um, if it's a footing issue, you just, you move on. You know, if it's, that Khalil Mack on one of them just made an unbelievable play. You know, he's Khalil Mack. Um, so some of those, you just take it case by case. Appreciate the research, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Wish TV. Coach, one of the highlights that surfaced from yesterday's game was Philip trash talking a little bit in the fourth quarter. It's kind of gone viral. I wanted. To get your reaction on that, we saw you interact with him on the sideline as he was still chirping and what that interaction was and what that means for your team to have a quarterback that that's fiery. 
Yeah, I, mean, I think Phil, our team loves Philip as a leader. Uh, knows that that's that's part of his mo. That's part of his game. Um, I can assure you that uh, my talk none, none of if you ever see me talking with him on the sideline, it's not about that. <laughs> um, you know, everybody. I, I tell the guys all the time. Hey, everybody's got their own personality. We're a team. Uh, we do what's best for the team, but within the team setting, everybody's free to express themselves in, in their own unique way. So. Um, we, we love and appreciate Phillip's competitiveness and his fire. Uh, it, it's good for our team, and I think it's, it's good for the game. Phillip is also professional enough to know where, how to draw the line on it and, and that there is a line that needs to be drawn at times. And uh, I, I think he's came up, come up close to that line a few times in his career, um, but I think he does a good job of staying on the right side of the line. Jim Aiello. Yeah, this is going to, I mean, I'm trying to think of the way to ask it. I just want to know, you you haven't had Marlon for a few games. Can you can you feel the lack of, of Marlon Mack in the run game, I guess, these, these past few games? I mean, yeah, miss Marlon. Marlon's a great player. Uh, so, at one respect, that's always an interesting question to ask because, you yes, you miss the guy. But both of these things are true. But you move on and everyone can be replaced. I really believe that. You know, I've always thought that. What coach or player, everyone's incredibly important, but everyone can be replaced. That's, I think, the fairest way to say it. So, yeah, we miss Marlon, but I think it gives our other guys an opportunity, and they've done well. You know, Jonathan's Jonathan's running well. I thought I think I see Jonathan running better and more confident each week. I, I can feel that the way he's seeing it and feeling it and reading it. Um, I can feel him getting better every week. Uh, you know, Jordan and Naheem obviously been around a few years. They've had some nice runs. So I, I think we'll continue to get better there. Just a quick ball. Is there, I think I've asked you this before. Can you, is there a chemistry that can build between a running back and an offensive line? Because it seemed like there was with Marlon, and then, and then maybe that could build with, with a guy like Jonathan as well. Yeah, there's no doubt a chemistry that I think that can build. You know, that particularly on zone blocking scheme stuff, you know, where – there, you just have a feel for when guys are coming off on blocks, you know, uh, if it's inside zone, if it's outside zone, you know, th those outside zone combinations, just having the patience to stay with it and then knowing how to set, how to set it up. Um, I think that all develops uh, as the season goes on. Okay. Two more, Stephen Holt. Hey Frank, um, actually this one quick uh, update and I actually have a, a formal question. Um, you didn't miss, did you mention Rocky Asin, and is he okay? I can't remember if you mentioned him. Yeah, Rock, Rock's good. You know, okay. if, if he if he could have gone in for another series, had we had we been in. Okay, cool. Um, and then on Julian Blackman, I'm wondering, you as a former quarterback, as an offensive coach, you know, when you know a, a guy has history playing corner the way he has, and when you see the game a certain way, that at that position and then moves to safety, what – sort of attributes does he bring do you think and, and does it you know is that part of what's helped him succeed if at all yeah that's yeah that's really a good question because it does affect the way I see it both ways you know when guys make that transition because it, it just normally tells me those those corners can usually cover more ground you know that's what they've done that they play they play corner they can cover more ground so you know when you're throwing deep balls um you know when you're throwing crossing routes and they tend to be a, they tend to be a little jumpier. You know, they tend to be a little jumpier. So you have a deep over route coming. Uh, a corner, a former corner, he's used to reacting. You know, he got to go get the ball, and you see that in Julian a little bit. So um, as just sitting talking with Allen today, Allen Williams, you know, Coach Allen Williams today about that, watching Julian, you know, going back and watching the tape and seeing him instinctively at times step up and be aggressive in plays, but then also having the instinct of knowing when to sit back and play deep. Um, so that's the combination you look for, and he's showing a knack to know when to do that, to know when he can step up and be aggressive, show those aggressive corner traits and coverage, um, but then yet you know, play safety for us and, and be that last line of defense. Last one, George Bremer. It looked like Jordan Glasgow had a really good game on special team. He obviously had the block punt, but on kickoff coverage as well. Uh, one, I'm wondering, is, did you see the same thing? And two, is he ready for a bigger role if he needs to play defense this week? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, well, first of all, to the first question, yeah, he huge game. Um, obviously came really clean, great rush. Would love to see him get that punt clean, right? I mean, he, he was there in time to kind of get it clean. I know Bubba and Frankie work on that with those guys a lot. You know, when you get through that clean, you don't want a partially blocked punt. You want to get that thing clean off the foot, make it go the other way, and then pick it up and score. But a really good job by Jordan and good job. He's been cons- he's been consistent, you know, really from day one for us on the coverage units and, and in every phase that he's been doing, just getting better and better. So, um, you know, as far as being able to step up and fill in on defense, yeah, there's no free rides here. I mean, you know, we got – this isn't college. We got a limited roster. So – you've got to be able to step in and play winning football.